So, welcome back everybody, let's have a look. Sorry I've not been around for the last few days, you know, but uh, you've got to, got, to, got to take the kids away sometimes, you know. <laughs> you know, there is other things in the world outside of cryptocurrency. Um, but, you know, saying that, you know, the, the cryptocurrency market never sleeps. Uh, and at the moment, it would appear that, you know, just from the vibe I get on Twitter and, and on, even on my own Telegram, I don't know what other YouTube channels are saying, because I just don't watch them. Uh, but it would appear that the world is coming to an end. Bitcoin is not going up like it always does, and uh, maybe the dream of uh, you know the financial uh, world collapsing and Bitcoin taking over and blockchain being the future that basically ends up uh, destroying everything that you and I have ever known and cr and creating a utopia of of just blockchains uh, or whatever whatever you've been you know uh, whatever dream people have been sold. Yes, blockchain is good, and yeah. Bitcoin has a future and what we're looking at here is a marketplace and um, all of those things that you've probably been sold may still completely be relevant and true doesn't stop the marketplace from being what it is which is a highly volatile place markets are volatile anyway uh, you know you look at Forex it's all over the place you look at um, commodities they're all over the place uh, look at look at oil for example you know oil was all over the place last year um, you know ridiculously volatile and that's just oil we're talking about cryptocurrency here we're talking about madness uh, we're talking about pure absolute unregulated madness and so of course with everything that goes up Things do come down, and what we're seeing now is 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 a I would say is a very healthy, very healthy um, retracement downtrend. Bear market? Well, not for me, not quite yet. There's a few precursors before we decide that it's a bear market, and if it is a bear market, um, there's 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 uh, for me bear markets can be pretty exciting. You can trade bear markets, you can short them, you can do all kinds of things. But the best thing you can do is for wait for them to bottom out. That's where the true opportunities come out. So I'm not talking about this video like it is a bear market. It's not. This is very much the same analysis that I applied on the last video and probably the last few videos prior to that. Is that until we find a bottom, we are going to be ranging, maybe even accumulating within this range, essentially uh, from about 33,000 to maybe even as high as um, 50,000. And that might sound madness. You might be thinking, well, that's, uh, that's, that's about a 90% range you're talking about there, mate. 90% range, accumulation in 90% range, and I'd say definitely. If you've watched my channel, you'll have recognized that I like to buy things in accumulation ranges. You know, did it with uh, XRP, did it with EOS, did it with Holochain, did it with FET, did it with Seller, did it with many, 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 many things. And looking at EOS for an example, I was I was accumulating that we spotted a clear accumulation range for you know from as low as two dollars twenty to as high as about three dollars ninety, right? That was an accumulation range of much bigger than the one we're talking about here with Bitcoin. Pretty big stuff there. Oh, well, actually, think about it. It's about the same. It's about the same range. It's basically about a hundred percent range, uh, give or take. If we look at um, XRP, I was accumulating that from about seventeen cents to about twenty-seven cents. So again, pretty pretty big range. Maybe not a hundred percent, but close to it. So when you find an accumulation range, you know, and I'm not saying that the accumulation range is going to be from you know exactly, uh, let's just say twenty-eight thousand to maybe. Fifty thousand. There'll be a, there'll be a clearer accumulation range once it takes place. But until we get that range uh, specifically, um, uh, I, I suppose proven to us by the fact that we have hit a low, um, yeah, then we can determine the range. And um, so for the moment, you know, nothing's nothing's set in stone. Definitely not. And I actually feel as though um, the best thing that could happen to Bitcoin at this very moment in time is to close a candle lower than these candles that we've got already. Maybe even close a candle on 33,000 um, or maybe even below. Uh, that would that would definitely scare a lot of people out. And judging by the way that the RSI looks, um, it could print a, uh, an, a nice form of bullish divergence on the RSI. That would lead a decent lead us to a decent bounce, and actually, historically, if we have a look at the way that Bitcoin's moved in the past, around the uh, the 50 exponential moving average, 
on the weekly, which is where we are at cur currently right now, um, we've we've historically had really big bounces from there. Whether it's in a bull market or a bear market, we've had big bounces. So bull market breakdown, 80% massive move. Up. Um, the bubble pop breakdown, this was about 100% move. Another one was about 60-70% move. All the way up to the next bubble pop moment over here, breakdown, 100% move, breakdown, 60% move. Uh, you know, this is uh, this is a, this is a very decent area to catch a bounce from. So, thinking about where this comes in at, roughly, it's about 33,000. If we think about where this uh, this could potentially print a, a lower low here and a higher low on the RSI, it gives me the idea that perhaps we are, we are going to be looking for one of those big bounces but that's all it would be for the moment a big bounce which might actually be big enough to start a potential uptrend um, over the next uh, weeks months I'm talking you know prolonged period of time accumulations are really frustrating uh, areas to be in because um, there's just as much fun for a bull as there is as a bear and just when you think one has the upper hand the other one comes in and goes no 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 my turn next it's my turn now and that, what that eventually does is we see all these moving averages here that are clearly in a downtrend they'll start to level out and then at that point really the bulls and the bears have, have, have really got a gr not really a much you know to to to, uh, uh, to give them the edge they, they, yeah everything is basically going sideways which is a true accumulation zone and that's why I'm saying we can speculate that this is an accumulation zone now we can we can speculate that that is the case but until we prove that there is a bottom and these moving averages start to cool off and calm down again and go go kind of sideways it's just going to be very choppy and crazy and, and you know some people say we're in a bull market some people say in a bear market I think the, the most reasonable thing to say is that you know what we're doing is we're, we're in a we're clearly in a downtrend we haven't yet printed a low and uh, until we do that, we're, not, we're neither in a bull market nor a bear market. We are in a downtrend in a, in a macro bull market still. So you know the, the large scale picture is that we are still in a, a bull market, uh, but yeah, we are pulling back to a large extent. So I'm not I'm not, I'm not here to, to to give any calls or anything like that. I never have done. It's never been the case. So we've made some epic trades on here. You know, all of that is in the past for people to view. Um, but one of the best ways to trade is is to accept that you know when there is no edge, you know, there is no trade, and to uh, if, if you believe in the asset. And again, it's one of the things I, I often say, and it's, a, it's it's not it's not it's nothing I coined. It's when in when in doubt, zoom out. The bigger picture tells you that the main variable in any equation to do with Bitcoin is time. Okay, so we can go all the way up, we can go all the way down, we can go all the way up, we can go all the way down, all the way down, all the way up, down, all the way up, down, all the way up, down, and maybe down further. The main equation that we really need to hold on to is time, and uh, in that respect, you know, time is the uh, is the greatest healer. And if we believe in the true value of Bitcoin, um, this is going to work out in the long run and again you know any hodler that's ever hodled apart from the ones that joined the market you know the last month has made money and um, if we think about what's going on right now yeah we could be entering into a bear market but again none of that is actually confirmed um, but if we think about where we are right right now in comparison to the top we're talking about a half price Bitcoin. It's a buy one get one free. It doesn't mean that you can't go uh, another month from now and say buy one get two free, or so on and so on and so on. But again, you know, when things go down, they offer up opportunities. When things go up, they do obviously have clearer, more distinct uh, opportunities to make faster profit if you're on the right side and get the uh, get the right entry point. Instantly gratifying, basically. But I think the problem that a lot of people have is that they've not really been in the market for very long. And there's nothing wrong with that. Everybody's new to the market at some point, you know, and this is all part and parcel of, of the way that the market moves. It goes up and it goes down, moves up massively, goes down massively. And the thing that makes it worse is when it does go down, it, go, it often goes down a lot faster. And this is why it's so... Um, uh, attractive to become a bear. Uh, bears, I can understand where they get their kicks from, is because all the money that it takes, uh, all, all the profits that, that get made in a bull market uh, can be made way, way faster in, in a downtrend. Because if we think about what happened here, so th this, this, uh, just these last two, three weeks really, a 50% move. You know, and some of these, uh, you know, some of these candles printed over a 24-hour period. So, you know, I, I can understand uh, the fear that sets in on some people um, when the, when they see these sort of moves. But it's, to me, it's really no big deal. It's all part of it. So, again, looking at this chart with fresh eyes, you know, because I'm back from my my little uh, my little break that I've had. 
Um, I'm looking at it thinking, okay, a lower low now is actually okay. This you know, Every time we make a lower low, it could be potentially the area for a bottom. And if there is going to be a bottom forming on this next lowest candle body close, um, even if it's all the way down to the bottom of this Bollinger Band, we're talking 29,000, and I would be very hopeful for a bounce at least all the way up to the 200 exponential. So I would be anticipating uh, another big sell-off perhaps down to around between the lower low here, the uh, the center, the bottom of this Bollinger Band to maybe this marked off area where we had launch pad, um, support, 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 support. Uh, if we came down to 28 to 29,000 and then found a really decent bounce up to the 200 exponential, that in itself is about a 42% move, which I think could happen quite quickly. Then what could at that point happen is an uptrend form from there, as this would maybe be considered the low, and I've had this area marked off for a little while now, saying that this could potentially be the low. And if we enter into a bear market, yeah, we got 20,000, obviously, but my, my, my actual targets would be about 16,000. But again, I'm not talking bear markets yet. Bear markets don't technically count for me until we've broken down below this uh, 50 exponential moving average on the weekly and prove that we get a rejection from it and we're not there yet. And obviously I'm talking my own target is 28,000, um, which is lower than this candle wick here. Uh, but provided the weekly candle body doesn't get rejected from this and this moving average doesn't prove to be a rejection zone, I'm very, very hopeful that we will continue with this all the way up uh, to a new all-time high throughout the rest of this year at some point. And anything around here to here is definitely buying opportunities, but I would be targeting, if we do get rejections from this, I would be targeting areas much further down towards the 200 exponential, which is currently at around 15,600, but will still continue to move up every week as we are above it, and this will slowly but surely snake its way up. This is going to be, if we do go into a bear market, this area here, whether we're above it or below it, but generally thereabouts, is going to be the accumulation zone for the next big bull run. The next big bull run. The market, the bull market, the bull run of the market, the market bull run, whether it takes a year, six months, three years or whatever, this might be the lowest you'll ever get to buy a Bitcoin again. But for the moment, you know, we're, I'm, I'm okay with what I'm seeing, so I'm not, I'm not particularly concerned, and I've been saying this for a little while. Everything seems okay to me. I, I welcome a downtrend. Um, I welcome it. Now, another thing that I've been saying, and again, we're going to do the live stream tonight. We would normally do it on Friday, but for the Patreon live stream is tonight. And I've been saying this, I suppose, like a broken record over and over and over and over again. But the, um, the, the way that this Bitcoin dominance chart has looked is that, yeah, it's been great. It's been such a good time for us and a good time for altcoins. But the further we go down, the more uh, vulnerable altcoins become. And the, it's really shown the, the vulnerability of that over the last couple of weeks, definitely. So now what we're seeing is uh, as, as a potential real... S a real problem with a lot of these altcoins and um, they can go uncomfortably low uh, wrecked I would say completely wrecked uh, and and for me you know we're, we're talking about a market dictated at this point right now by Bitcoin and so uh, I'm only really focused on buying Bitcoin there's a few other altcoins that I won't mention that I have been buying bits of and that, you know I've got reasons for that but generally the market right now is being dictated by the uh, the health or the uh, the lack of health uh, of Bitcoin and so it's all about buying Bitcoin and I can use that Bitcoin in the future to flip over into altcoins when they are significantly oversold just like what we did in January and we destroyed the market to the tune of 10x 20x or more I do it all over again and turn however many Bitcoins I have uh, into uh, however many more I can I, I can accumulate through using uh, altcoins for their you know I suppose for their 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 true purpose, which is, I suppose, flipping bitcoins, multiplying bitcoins. At the moment, I would leave every altcoin alone unless you have a very, very good reason for buying it. And there's plenty of reasons to buy it. They're all on sale too. But not all altcoins are created equal, as we all know. Um, and, and so generally, as a rule of thumb, I would be very hesitant to get involved in altcoins while the market looks this way and while Bitcoin hasn't even put in a bottom. Anyway, I am going to leave it with you there, but I will see you this evening uh, on the live stream. And if you want to become a Patreon user, uh, there is a, a link in the description below. It's £7.50 a month. You get two access, two, two live streams a week um, and, uh, and, and a few other little perks. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you have a nice day. Take it easy.